In this problem, we're going to exploit Gauss's law to find the electric field inside a uniformly charged sphere. So let's start off by drawing a diagram. So you can imagine a sphere being on the ground and you're looking down on it. So let's say this sphere has a radius of big R. And let's say we want to find the, at the electric field at this point over here. So at this point, we're at a distance of small r away from the center of the sphere. So how do we find the electric field at this point? So we're going to exploit Gauss's law. So the Gauss's law tells us that the electric field over some closed surface is equal to the amount of charge enclosed by that surface divided by the constant epsilon. So we can draw uh, any kind of closed surface and the uh, Gauss's law will still hold. But in order to exploit Gauss's law, we're going to consider a spherical shell. And so for the spherical shell, first of all, you can already uh, see that along the spherical shell, the electric field is going to be constant because of the symmetrical nature of the setup over here. There is no reason why the electric field should be stronger or weaker on any other point. So the electric field is constant along the surface of the spherical shell. And for its direction, it should point in the direction that is perpendicular to the surface because there is no preference for it to lean in any other direction because, again, because of the symmetrical nature of this setup over here. So now we know that for this closed surface over here, this spherical shell with radius of small r, the electric field is pointing in a direction that is perpendicular to the surface, and it has a constant value, it has a constant magnitude along this spherical shell. And then now let's take a look at dA. So dA, by definition, it is also pointing in a direction that is perpendicular to the surface. So recall that dA is actually a vector. So it has a magnitude that is equal to a tiny bit of the surface, so it's a differential, and it also has a uh, direction that is perpendicular to the surface. So what this means is that both the electric field and the and dA itself, they're both pointing in the same direction. So if you take two vectors that are pointing in the same direction, then you take the dot product, all you're going to get is that you're going to get the multiplication of the, of the two magnitudes. So you have the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of dA. So I'm going to use a small a here to denote to that this is just the scalar. So this is a vector, this is a scalar, this is the magnitude of dA. So it's a tiny piece of the surface, it's a differential. And we can actually simplify this, so this, this essentially just becomes a double integral of all the tiny bits of the surface combined together. And we can actually pull the electric field out because it's just a constant, because the electric field is, the magnitude of the electric field is constant along the surface of this spherical shell. And if you add up the tiny bits of the surface and you go along the entire uh, spherical shell, you just get the surface area of the spherical shell, which is equal to 4 pi small r square. So this is what the surface integral is going to be equal to. So on the right hand side we have the amount of charge enclosed divided by the epsilon. So the amount of charge enclosed is equal to the volume enclosed by the spherical shell. So it's just 4 over 3 pi r to the power of 3. And we multiply this by the charge density to get the amount of charge enclosed. So we just need to divide this by the constant epsilon to get uh, the right hand side of this formula. And so by Gauss's law, we know that this is equal to 4 pi r squared times the magnitude of the electric field. So we can do a bit of simplification over here. So the pi's cancel out, this r squares cancel out. So the magnitude of the electric field is equal to r times rho don't forget the 3 over here, so we have 3 divided by epsilon. So this is the magnitude of the electric field. And don't, f no, don't forget the, the electric field is actually a vector, so we can change this expression here to include the direction as well. So I'm going to define the r hat unit vector. So this r hat is going to be some vector that is pointing in the so-called radial direction. So you can imagine uh, expressing your answer in spherical coordinates. You have this sphere with a radius of r, and you're considering this smaller sphere over here. So at any point in this small sphere uh, sphere over here, so let's say at this point, the electric field is going to have a magnitude of this much, and it's going to point in the radial direction, in the r direction. So this is your answer.